Yeah, hello, this is the Broadcasting Center again here at the IEC General Meeting 2016 in Frankfurt. My name is Kurt Schlüttelburg from the DKE. And uh, today, or in this evening, in this interview, we will talk about uh, virtual reality in standardization practice. This was a topic of a session at the Reinvention Lab. And uh, for this exciting topic, we got uh, an expert, of course. So welcome. Hi. Markus Prenais. Yes. You are the founder and the CEO of the Present 4D GmbH. And uh, you are a VR consultant. Yeah, VR consultant. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm a pioneer. I'm a multimedia pioneer. And uh, the leading act of uh, multimedia these days is virtual reality. And our company uh, makes three things. First, we make virtual reality software. We make uh, the PowerPoint for VR. You can produce VR presentations without programming skills. You can click it all together and distribute it online to other virtual reality devices. The second thing is we are doing things the 1990s, multimedia productions, so content creation. And we have a department for uh, consulting. Mm -hmm. There we are working together with uh, KPMG. It's a 160,000 uh, employees, a uh, strong company, also consultants, mm -hmm. uh, and together with them, uh, we develop uh, long-term strategies for uh, virtual reality in large companies. Okay, I see. Could you briefly explain uh, to the audience what uh, uh, VR exactly means, or yes. 4D and so on? Yes. So, virtual reality uh, has two words. The second word, reality, is that where we are living in. And it's called virtual reality because it's similar to the reality. Uh, the core feeling of virtual reality is a presence feeling. That means if you're wearing these glasses, you see a different environment. But if you rotate your head in this environment, you also rotate in the environment. So if I'm looking to the left, I see another picture. Yeah? Everybody knows it. But in virtual reality, it's the same. Okay. But it's, uh, it's uh, not a real environment. Sometimes it can be, but it must not be uh. a virtual uh, environment. So I could also, we have seen it uh, uh, 15 minutes uh, before in the speech, that we had a panorama video around us during we had the headsets on, and the signal came from another room in this exhibition. Mm, okay, so, yeah, so mm. this was no virtual environment, but it was not the environment around my body. Mm. So um, virtual reality creates a very strong Im impression, I guess? Yes, virtual reality and is very yeah, uh, emotional. Yeah, so what do you think, what will be changed by this technology? And so uh, I hear these questions very often in these days because we uh, have introduced over 5,000 people in the meantime at innovation exhibitions into the topic uh, VR. And uh, think back 25 years, the internet was invented. And in these days also the same question was asked. And now after 25 years, who would ask again, what can you do with the internet? It's obvious, it's clear, it's in every part of our life. And it has connected uh, humankind better than before. And uh, virtual reality is nothing more than the further development of all existing communication mm. and uh, visual communication technologies. Mm. So what will be changed? The question must be, what will not be changed? So the real life will be enhanced. We will start working a part of our daily job inside VR. We will be in VR uh, when uh, we are private. And uh, so the fields of application are everywhere. Mm. It can be a surgery, some uh, field of medicine. It can be architecture, uh, any kind of planner, uh, engineers. And uh, if you see it in the private part, uh, you can communicate with your friends, like with the telephone, but you have the feeling that you are at the same place. That's why uh, uh, Facebook has bought the main manufacturer of okay. VR glasses, Oculus Rift. Yeah, yeah. They bought them one and a half year ago, 
and uh, we see uh, the steps which Mark Zuckerberg uh, does these days. Mm. Uh, he recently, last week, he showed uh, that they have uh, avatars now, three-dimensional avatars, which also have uh, different mood, mm, okay. yeah? like so 3D emojis in virtual reality. Okay, I see. So uh, obviously there is a huge potential for various fields of application. But however, we know, for example, from Samsung, I guess they stopped uh, selling their 3D TVs or so. Yes. For, for what reason do you know? Or yes. what makes uh, you so optimistic for yeah, virtual reality? Yeah, okay. Then so uh, stereoscopic imaging is best known from the cinema. And so there you have uh, such... Uh Goggles uh, where you can see in with each eye a different image. Uh, so uh, at, at the end they did not sell enough. So it's mm -hmm. not interesting from a commercial point of view for them. Uh, a lot of companies, consulting companies and banks, financial institutes, for example Goldman Sachs and Deutsche Bank made uh, VR business reports and they all come to the conclusion that until 2020 we will have a three digit billion sum which will be uh, in invested in VR and AR, augmented mm. reality. Okay, okay. So uh, nobody knows but uh, the feeling of VR is completely different than the feeling mm. of stereoscopic movie watching okay uh, it's not that emotional you just at the end you have to try virtual reality mm. you can't uh, so we can't explain it you have to feel it mm, okay I see so but I'm sure there must be some let's say obstacles or hurdles or something yes. which slow down the overall development further development of this technology what what is that in your opinion what uh, so what is problematic? It is a, it's a very very fast progress in VR development so some month ago, uh, I guess three months ago, Google announced a whole VR platform consisting by a certified hardware, um, programming environment, and an app store. And mm -hmm. they have already eight huge uh, telephone companies, um, Huawei, LG, HTC, and they all build this Google certified VR smartphones. This will cause a high three-digit million amount of smartphones in the next three years. Okay. So this will, uh, the party will start now. Yeah, <laughs> okay, I see. So but coming to standardization, what do you think, uh, where can virtual reality use best in the field of standardization? So uh, the field of standardization is about communication. Yeah. So you have to talk, and you have to talk with people which are not at your place. So the first thing is uh, you can make VR presentations. You can also download a demo for air 360 degree movie, which we have uh, done for the general meeting. So there you can uh, see, you can experience our vision. Uh, so the advantage is that you don't have to travel that you can, with the use of 360 degree cameras, you can sit on one table without being to together in one room. Uh, you can share 3D models. For example, uh, if you have such an Oculus Rift headset, and I'm looking in this, uh, for example, let's take my glasses. These are my VR glasses now. I see it from that perspective, but when I'm with you together in one room, then you see it from the other side. Okay. If we are connected together with VR goggles, then we can choose whether to see different mm. or okay. the same perspective. Yep. And we can do that with more people than uh, that uh, will fit into the room. Mm. So the physical borders uh, 
fall down. Yeah, okay, and this would be, of course, very beneficial for all the meeting organization and of carrying course. out meetings and in the international scale, of yes. course. Very interesting, yes. so, yeah. Okay, so thanks a lot, Markus, for this talk. I think uh, this technology seems to be really exciting. Yes, of I course. I mean, in general, and uh, in particular for standardization, as we just have heard. So, thank you very much. IEC General Meeting 2016. Connecting Communities. Reinvent standardization.